uh, I have some thoughts on dual wielding and if it's actually optimal. I have more than enough opportunity. So she does this and then this, I can like block it. That's where it's like, <laughs> you can even like use your elbow here. Is it hard to see? Yes. This little effect happens on the surface of the shield. You could use that to your advantage in the same way as the chain punch is back home. Hello, my name is Philip. I'm a filmmaker, martial artist, and today we're going to be talking about the fighting in Dune. The fight choreography, the action, it does it make sense and would it make sense to fight with these sorts of weapons. Uh, I actually got invited to an early screening of Dune uh, by WB. It was absolutely fantastic. Went with Aaliyah. It was a blast and uh, we got to see the film early. And uh, one of the things a lot of people have been asking me about is the fight choreography and Shadowversity actually did a video on this recently and I agree with pretty much everything he said. Uh, so I'm just going to expand on that a little bit and share my thoughts as far as the fighting. What he had to say was essentially that it was quite believable. It made sense to use short swords. We actually are joined today by Leah, who has her weapon of war as well. You may have seen my documentary of me living as a warrior monk at the Shaolin Temple in China. So I do have some experience. I also used to fence saber and Aaliyah East Defense. A bay. So we're gonna give a little bit of demonstration here and then uh, share some thoughts. Uh, and I'm actually gonna get into a little bit more of the Shaolin uh, Kung Fu side of it, why I think that would be very good as far as the Dune fighting. If you guys have been enjoying my documentary films, my action films, my reviews for Dune, you wanna see more, make sure to subscribe. We're going on 220,000 subscribers, which is crazy. Thank you so much for that. And uh, make sure to check out my gaming channel if you wanna see my cinematic analysis of games. Let me know in the comments if you agree and if you liked Dune. So in Dune, they use personal shields that repel any sort of firearms or like sort of firepower. So they've essentially rendered weapons like firearms obsolete and lasers and everything. And there's actually another part of lore where if you use a laser gun, which is kind of like the most powerful weapon in the Dune universe, and if you use that against a personal shield, it actually creates a nuclear reaction and it'll kill everybody involved within like a several mile radius or more. It's it's completely destructive. So it's kind of like this weird stalemate. So for instance, like Shadowversity said in his video, if we we're at this sort of like fencing range and we're gonna be, you know, in, in normal fencing and this is two different fencing styles, keep in mind, you essentially wanna make an opening and poke them, right? Right, so in FA, the whole body is the target, sort of like Dune, there's a similarity there. Mm -hmm. um, but the difference between FA and Saber is that FA uses thrusting uh, mm. and stabbing motions instead of sabers, what mm -hmm. would you, how would you describe that? Sabers Swinging, is pretty much slashing. slashing right. A cool counterattack in Epe, where if I was to stab her, she's going to make an opening and stab to the armpit. Great. So this is fantastic for Epe and it would definitely kill. Oh, the armpit is a bad area to get stabbed in. But in Dune, if you think about it, we'll go slow motion here. If I'm, you know, vying for an attack here, she makes the opening, she stabs me, it's going to bounce off me. So in, in actuality, it's like I'm almost an advantage. Stab me, then like I have more than enough opportunity. So it feels like just just kind of stalemate. Like we're gonna be too far away to do much with it. The only way to break through a shield is to move slowly through it. It's incredibly easy for her to slack that away. All right, so how am I gonna do that? So I, I have to agree with Shad and the, you know, the genius of the choreography here that they use short swords in the book and the movie. Right. It makes a lot of sense. So we've- Closer, more controlled. Exactly. So I, it's started to make me think about grappling and a lot of Wing Chun techniques that I think would be great for this. So I'm going to show you guys. Um, so we've got some even more dangerous weapons here. <laughs> We're going to showcase. <laughs> I have some thoughts on dual wielding and if it's actually optimal for this fighting situation. A lot of people say like, oh, maybe wrestling would be good and stuff. Definitely. But like with wrestling, you kind of need both of your hands to control someone's entire body. Right. So I think like it's almost optimal in the Wing Chun sort of way, Kung Fu to like trap their hands. Now it's unclear if, if shields are gonna block grabbing because they grab a lot in the movie, right? It's kind of hard yeah. to tell. And this could just be like choreography, you know, checkmate where they're like, all right, we have to grab people. <laughs> I, we love to watch it in slow motion. Uh, and I block something here in like kind of a Wing Chun way. If she strikes with that, I could almost use the grabbing to trap her like this and then slowly move it in. But the problem is you have to make sure you're not open. So that's why I think the trapping is exceptionally good because we can be fighting kind of like normally here mm -hmm. with these, you know, very dangerous weapons there kind of normally and it's just bouncing off each other. So you have to kind of, you know, create, create openings, but it's, it's just, it's not doing any damage until you essentially have to close the distance in a very Wing Chun way and kind of, you know, 
do something, but if it's just both of us trying to poke each other, we'll both die, all right? Because she can do the same thing to me as they showcase in the first scene in Dune. But then I started to realize, man, it's almost not optimal to use dual wielding in the Dune system. I almost think it's better to have your hand. They can't like cut, cut off your fingers. In a normal fight, this would be suicide mm -hmm. for like a blade fight. But it's almost like, man, I want to control her body. So if I have my hand out like this, we can kind of... <laughs> If I have a hand out like this, we can kind of like test the waters and I'm fine. So if someone's like testing the waters in a, in a, in a martial arts type way, almost like using a boxing defense or something, you like maybe let the strike go through and then like trap her arm, maybe do something like this, switch hands, like then try to push it in slow. It's, you can still use your hand. I guess is what I'm saying. Your hand's still going to bounce off if you try to slap them, right? But I can grab people now with this hand and it's not just a blade. It's a so I don't know. It's not, you know, obviously there's advantages to both. But when we were just messing around, it's like, man, I wonder, you know, being here kind of testing your distance, like, it'd almost be nice to be able to instead grab this hand and do something like that to be able to uh, achieve the cut. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, you can, like, easily kick blades. That's right. Like, you don't have to sacrifice your limbs in order to yeah. use your body. That's uh, right. With your hands, you could switch hands with this. You could really kind of mess with people trying to see where the, the slow cut's coming from. It's like mind games. You can, you know, like, test them kind of kick them a little bit, kick them, and then like try to bait them. And then when they finally attack, what if I, you know, she attacks and I grabbed her hand and like pulled her in. And again, we're unsure if you can grab through the shields and move. Yeah, there sure. seems to be a discrepancy on that. So let us know in the comments. We haven't like watched them frame by frame yet. But say, you know, she does that, I grab and in a very Wing Chun way, I can kind of pull her into my blade, <laughs> right? Because like, how does that work? Can you pull them into a, into a, uh, a stationary blade? Who knows, right? So what if I had it there then? Achieve the, the slice when she's through it. So just some fun ideas. But uh, I think, I mean, you might as well use your body, right? Like a lot more kicking and stuff. They do wrestle a bit in the movie. So is it that like a faster weapon will be even less effective on the shield? Like, what did, yes. you, what did he shoot a bow, an arrow? Wouldn't work for sure, yeah. yeah. I think it's like Proceeding. even this. It's too fast. Hello, I wanted to talk to you about today's sponsor, The Ridge. They sent me this incredible Ridge wallet, as well as a backpack and knife. I've actually had it for a few weeks now. Got it right before I traveled to Iceland, and it was just so nice. Have you guys ever been traveling in the airport? Instead of that big, bulky wallet while trying to go through security and everything, you just have everything perfectly you know, contained, nice and tight and secure in a wallet like this. Completely safe. Your cash is secure with this cash clip on the back. The design is fantastic. It's never gonna break. It's never gonna rip like some of those really weak, poorly made wallets that I've had in the past. It's several different designs on the website, so make sure to use my unique discount code Phil or go to theridge.com slash Phil for 10% discount. Again, can't recommend it enough. Thank you so much, Ridge, for sponsoring this video. So one of the things uh, that I learned at the Shaolin Temple or study of the Shaolin Temple was there's a lot of trapping and Wing Chun in this particular system. And why it's cool and made me think of Dune is it's all about closing the distance. So you're kind of like waiting for your opponent to do something. If she punches or whatever, it gives us something to work with and then we can close the distance and strike. So if she does something else, we'll do it slower. Like you wanna, sure, you can do this, move in. And it just made me think like, man, that's so good for the dune fighting because you have to get in close. Like you can't, you know, unless the person's just not paying attention, you can like sneak a spear in or something as Shadowversity said. Mm -hmm. But it's like, man, that's not very optimal for a war scenario when there's like people fighting all over right. the place. Uh, I'm in here, I come behind, and it's even like I'm, I've got her hand taken care of so she can't attack me with this arm. And then say it's like I'm kind of looking around me to see who else is fighting, and then I can slowly move this through and go on to somebody else. And Wing Chun is made for fighting, fighting multiple people. So she does this, and then this, I can like block it in a very kung fu way. Make the cut there, I can come over here, I can trap that hand or something, and then I love this idea of once she's trapped, you can even like use your elbow here oh. and move. <laughs> Almost made blades obsolete in the normal way because mm -hmm. you can't just start swinging them around. Yeah. So it's pretty fascinating. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm actually like... <laughs> it's almost all about deception, which is really cool. Oh, I thought of another idea I had from earlier. It's all about deception. So she was, she was going to strike my leg. You could do some nonsense where like I come in with like a like a bait type thing. They like, say like kind of lunge, like in a fencing sort of way, like lunge to her face. And then, you know, even if she's moving out of the way like that, I'm slowly moving this in. It's almost like a, you know, secret yeah, make that cut. 
<laughs> yeah, so it'd be like, it'd be so much about deception. And it made me think of Wing Chun because the chain punch, you guys may know it from Wing Chun. It's, it's one of the iconic things you guys have seen in the Yip Man movies. It's this very fast punch. One of the lesser known uses of it is it's not the strongest punch, obviously, but you're battering somebody like a battering ram in the face over and over again. <laughs> uh, it actually affects their vision. That's one of the main reasons. And remember, you'd actually be hitting them, but it's just like, even without the hit, you see what's happening? Is it hard to see? Yes. It's always in her <laughs> face. So you could do the same thing. And it made me think about with Dune, in the visual effects department, there is this little thing that happens when the weapons bounce off. Did you notice that? It's yeah. like, this little effect happens on the surface of the shield. So it made me think, you could use that to your advantage in the same way as the chain punch. So say I was like, and this this effect happened, It'd be a great opening to then like move something else in. You could even use your blade as a blind spot and then move in here and move in slow. So there's just so many possibilities where you could be kind of just like annoying them, smack them in the face with no intention of killing them that way. Mm -hmm. And then the whole time kind of doing something else, but. <laughs> 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 some stuff you could you could mess around and be like okay how could i use this in the dune sort of way and almost, you could legit get to this point where even though it's bouncing grab somebody move them in and then it's kind of like you know make your way through the shield while she's like super contorted get in there so i don't know it gives you some ideas but put your sword up and yeah it would just be like you know, there's not a lot of opportunity to, yeah, get in close. Epi, I think, is a lot better opportunity. Like, say she did find an opening on me and stab me, then, like, I have more than enough opportunities to parry it somewhere else and then repose. But the funny thing is, if we were attacking each other, it would be an endless stalemate of, like, oh, you got me, I got you, but it's not doing anything. <laughs> just be yeah. smacking each other forever, which it would invariably move to this distance. I think, yeah, you just and then drop your be, weapons, I feel. Yeah, but it's like oh, too close to do anything. Like, what am I going to do? Wrap it around or, you know, it's, it's too close. Very fun in real life, but not not altogether very useful for Arrakis. When you're out in the desert, you can't use shields because it calls the worms. True, yeah, yeah. Because they're attracted Arrakis to rhythmic is... sounds. So then everything's back into play, like real fighting. True. But, but there's um, still no guns, I don't think. Most of the fighting in the movie is with shields. Yeah, definitely check out Shad's video. It's really well done. I always love his takes. Like me moving back and forth. I awesome. just think there's a link in the description if you want to check him out. Really good channel. Um, he's also the cons medieval consult for Brandon Sanderson, one of my favorite authors. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> it seems it's they grab with a little more liberty than they can smack people with swords. I guess but grabbing wouldn't really work though, because then. But I mean, you kind of have to because the they do a lot no of takedowns motion. and stuff where they're like tripping just... people. So how would you have to be like oh, then meant, trip them? Like weapons, I thought. Well, no, I mean, like, if you were going to grab someone's hand, is it like... Maybe. Probably not, because they do a lot of grabbing in the movie. So sure. let us know in the comments if you caught that. Immobilize them and control their weapon. It's super important to control their weapon or you die too. Okay. So I'm just going to move in purposely to her attack. And then once it's it would bounce oh, yeah. slightly, I could then, you know, grab, move in, slowly move through, do the cut. We love the book by Frank Herbert. And, oh, uh, yeah. You know, it was, it was, I think they did very well with it in the movie because it's, it's hard to, to depict fit that. everything in and like, depict that. Yeah. yeah it's, like, it's a hard style to depict. The question is, could you kill people with your hands? I think the answer is yes. You know, quickly, I'm fine. I can move in. I can do any sort of nonsense where it's like, <laughs> and say if I've got her trapped here, I can literally like slowly go into her eyeballs with my fingers, like slowly go into her throat. And then I think once you're inside, can you? I think so. Crush it. I'm not really sure, oh but God. there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of things where it's like, you know, say she's here, 
And then my, if you can grab, she's down like that. And then I could slowly like move the elbow into the eye socket and stuff. If you were here, like, you know, plate armor, you're essentially invincible in that scenario, right? Cause like they'd have to get through and then slowly it'd be like, yes. bink <laughs> and hit the armor. You'd be you wouldn't even need super dense armor because they can't move fast. If in fact you can smack people with your body, can you imagine? Just like treating it like a real martial arts match and kind of moving in and doing a bunch of nonsense. So anyways, it's interesting. But it made me think about that with the counterattacks of Wing Chun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's back home. I love the two No, that's fine. I just don't want to smack you. <laughs> um, if you want to see more, make sure to sub. Check out the gaming channel and check out my documentary on the Shaolin Temple if that sounds interesting to you. This is my thoughts on the shield. I hope you guys like it. See you around town.